Good morning. What did you ask me to do? I'm sorry. Well, we are here on FMCE 15 041254, and it's a matter of. Can you see Mr. Scotty? I can see. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, great. So we can start in the matter of Melinda Fay, Mayor Scotty, and Justin Sean Scotty, and we here are the order to show cause. Um, so, Mr. Scotty, today is your chance to explain to the court why the court should not sanction you and why you believe that the court should continue to allow you access to the division and Ms. Gutmardo's email rather than being restricted to filing requests solely with the clerk of court, as well as to tell the court why you should not be prohibited from further filing pro se filings in this court unless the document and hat has been reviewed and signed by a member in good standing of the Florida Bar to certify that a good faith basis exists for each claim presented. Okay, so now is your opportunity, Mr. Scotty, um, to explain to the court why we sh I should not sanction you for the emails that you sent to the division and Ms. Gutmardo and Ms. Lamb, as well as um, why I should continue to allow you file pleadings without an attorney. Okay, um, this is all on the record, right? You cannot turn an exercising a constitutional right into a crime. Miller versus Kansas, the claim and exercise of constitutional rights cannot be converted into a crime. <clears throat> Cooper versus Aaron, no state legislator, or executive, or judicial officer can war against the Constitution without violating his or her undertaking to support it. The First Amendment protects me and allows me to petition and redress the court for grievances. This cannot be converted into a crime. The Sixth Amendment provides that a person accused of a crime has the right to confront a witness against him or her in a criminal action. There is no injured party. There was no crime committed by the respondent, yet here I am being treated as a criminal for exercising my rights. The order to show cause was made void when all previous orders were made void. The first order was made void <clears throat> was when the general magistrate made the order. So the general magistrate did not produce a path to no restrictions. As you can see from the transcripts that were filed, pages four, five, seven, and eight, the court spent its time making sure that Miss Mayor was able to be heard and had a good connection and no one was around her and that she was comfortable. It was a 15 minute event. On page 21, line 19, the general magistrate's computer battery starts to go low and she needs to take a break to charge it. Why is this happening so early in a seven hour trial? Page 28 and 30, 230, opposing counsel admits one of respondents' petitions as their evidence. Why? Intimidation, knowing the general magistrate is going to take their side. Pages 9 to 27 and pages 31 to 59 are more evidence of presumption for the mother only hearing her motions, false allegations, and hearsay. The father's motions that have documents supporting the mother's claims are actually her own actions and not the father's are not heard. The whole one hour was solely focused on the mother and not the best interest of the child. It is evident in the general magistrate's ruling when her unlawful decision is solely based on what the child is doing with the mother, the mother's family, the mother's routines, and not what is in the best interest of the child, according to Florida Statute 61.13 and Florida Statute 1014.04. The seven-hour trial became a one-hour hearing, a hearing only one motion and one side. Not a fair trial and definitely not a full trial. The trial turned into a day off for the general magistrate instead of conducting court, i.e. the trial. The general magistrate only heard opposing counsel's one motion and did not conduct court in a judicial manner and allowing other motions and petitions of the respondent to be heard. Violating the 14th Amendment due process, Florida Statute 61.13 by showing presumption for the mother and violating Florida Statute 1014.04 parental rights. Under the first DCA precedent, relocation is insufficient standing alone for modification. Relocation by itself is not enough to be the substantial change in circumstances. Case law Garcia v. Giles, Lyle v. Guppy, Bryan v. Wheel, Schaefer v. Schaefer, Troxel v. Granville, and Heath v. Lee. Not only was the second order made void due to the first.